Hello and welcome to the next video in the OSPF for CCNP and beyond course. I think I found a way to improve the audio for these videos, so hopefully the returning students enjoy that. Still no haircut yet because you know coronavirus and all, but until then you can enjoy this hat that I bought on my honeymoon in Hawaii. If you don't know already, this is a course on OSPF that should cover everything you need to know for CCNA, CCMP Encore, or Advanced Routing and Services exams, and things like that. Please like and subscribe if you enjoy the content, as that'll help me keep creating more. If you leave a comment and let me know what days are best to put these videos out, I'll try to adjust the schedule. Also, you can just leave a comment and let me know what you're studying and any other questions you might have. Let's see what we're getting into this time. In this lesson, we're going to cover OSPF neighbor and topology discovery at a high level. We'll talk about the five packet types OSPF uses to communicate, and we'll look deeper into the OSPF hello packet specifically and some of its contents. Let's begin with neighbor and topology discovery. OSPF v2 runs over IPv4 and uses IP protocol 89. This is one of those facts you'll just want to commit to memory and you'll thank me later. So OSPF uses IP protocol number 89. To send and receive updates about the network and form adjacencies, OSPF uses multicast traffic whenever possible. The two addresses you're going to need to memorize for this are 224.0.0.5, which is all OSPF routers, so all the OSPF routers in the OSPF domain. And then you have 224.0.0.6, which is all D routers or all designated routers in the OSPF domain. We'll cover designated routers in detail in an upcoming lesson and talk about what they are, why they are, things like that. But for now, just commit these addresses to memory. Know that dot five is all OSPF routers and dot six is all designated routers. OSPF uses five different packet types to communicate, share updates, and form neighborships. Let's examine these packets on the next slide. The table you see on the screen here is showing the five types of packets OSPF uses to communicate. OSPF routers move through different phases or states before becoming fully adjacent with each other. By fully adjacent, I mean that all routers have an identical copy of the link state database. The neighbor states and the adjacency requirements are covered in more detail in the next video of this course. But once you enable OSPF on an interface, that interface starts to send OSPF hellos, discover neighbors, and share information about the connections in the OSPF domain. Before we go deeper into that process, let's just look over these packet types. First, you have the hello packet, which is used to discover and maintain neighbors. Next is the DBD, or the database description packet, which summarizes and describes the contents of the link state database. These packets are exchanged as adjacency is formed between OSPF routers. Then we have the LSR, a link state request packet, which is used to request information from a neighbor about links in the neighbor's link state database. Then we have the LSU, which is sent in response to the LSR, and LSU stands for link state update. Finally, the link state ACK or the acknowledgement, which is sent in response to flooded LSAs and is used to ensure reliability. So, hey, I got your update, you know, thank you. All of these packets are important and necessary for OSPF to function, but a very important packet is the hello packet, which we'll take a deeper look at in the next few slides. When you enable OSPF on an interface with either a network statement or by enabling OSPF directly in the interface configuration mode, it starts to send out OSPF hello packets from that interface. The OSPF hello is used to discover and check up on OSPF neighbors to make sure that they're still online. These hello packets are sent out the interface once every hello interval, which we'll explain soon. In many cases, the default hello interval is going to be 10 seconds. So an active OSPF interface will send the hello packets every 10 seconds. If an OSPF router does not receive a hello packet from a neighbor within a set period of time, which is known as the dead interval, they declare the neighbor down. So you have hello interval and dead interval. By default, the dead timer is four times the hello interval. So that's 40 seconds if the hello interval is every 10 seconds. So basically every 10 seconds you're sending hellos. If you don't get a hello for 40 seconds, you decide that guy is gone. No longer my neighbor. Bye bye. The hello packets contain information or attributes that the routers must agree on to become neighbors. 
We will see these fields in the next slides and adjacency requirements are covered in detail in a future lesson, probably the next lesson in the series. So once the routers agree and start to form the adjacency, they begin to exchange their link state database. Most of the time, the hello packet is sent to the all routers address, which was, if you remember, 224.0.0.5. But you may also run into situations where you manually define a neighbor. And this is outside the scope of this lesson. We may revisit the, the idea of manually configured neighbors later in the course. But for now, just know that the hello packet is typically sent to the all OSPF routers address of 224.0.0.5. In the next section, we'll take a deeper look into an actual OSPF hello packet. But first, let's recap really quick what we learned so far. We know that OSPF is a dynamic interior gateway routing protocol. OSPF routers maintain a link state database or LSDB that describes their connections in the area. Each router sends out LSAs, link state advertisements, to populate the link state database and construct a complete view of the network topology within an OSPF area. Routers exchange their database and LSAs by becoming neighbors, and the first step in becoming neighbors is the hello packet. The routers then share their LSDB and provide or request updates about connections in the OSPF domain. The routers move through a series of neighbor states before becoming what's called fully adjacent, therefore sharing an identical LSDB. If any of these terms or concepts confuse you or sound strange, just review some of the earlier videos or do some quick Googling to refresh yourself. We'll cover neighbor states, adjacency requirements, and most likely some basic configuration and possibly troubleshooting in the next video. But before the next video in the course, let's look deeper into the hello packet specifically. So on the screen here, we have all the contents of an OSPF hello packet. We'll look at a real packet in a second, but let's just go over these fields. The router ID or RID is a 32-bit ID for an OSPF router. It looks like an IP and you can either configure this router ID manually or it will assign itself based on either a loopback or interface IP address. More on that will come soon. Authentication options specify which type of authentication is being used, if any. We may or may not cover authentication in this course. Leave a comment below if you want me to add a section to the end on authentication. The area ID, this is another important field. This field specifies which OSPF area the interface that sent the hello packet belongs to. You can see this in decimal or dotted decimal format. So area one or 0.0.0.1, .0 or for area zero, you might see a zero or 0.0.0.0. .0. The network mask specifies the mask for the primary IP address of the interface the hello packet was transmitted from. So it's the mask of the interface that sent the hello packet. Interface priority has to do with the election of designated and backup designated routers, which will be explained in detail later. Just know that it's in the hello packet for now. Then you also have the hello interval, which we briefly explain. The hello interval is just the period of time in seconds that a router will send hello packets out each OSPF enabled interface. This is something that I want to mention really quick, actually, while we're here. I keep saying OSPF enabled interface. A common misconception is that you are, quote, advertising networks into OSPF, end quote, or something like that. What you're actually doing, though, whether it be with a network statement under the OSPF process or enabling OSPF through the interface configuration mode, what you're doing is enabling OSPF on an interface, and that interface begins to send hello packets and participate in the OSPF process. We'll go over configuration more soon in the next video, but I just wanted to mention this really quick since we're on the topic briefly and it's a common misconception that you're advertising networks into OSPF. Actually, what you're doing is enabling OSPF on an interface. So moving on, you also have the dead interval. This was briefly explained, but it's just the time span in seconds that a router will wait before determining another router is offline. It's typically four times the hello interval. So like I said, every 10 seconds, I'm gonna say hello, 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 hello. If I don't hear hello from one of my neighbors within 40 seconds, I'm gonna declare that that neighbor's down and I'm gonna flush him out of my, you know, my neighbor table. The DR and BER or designated router and backup designated router field contain the IP address of the designated and backup designated router for the segment. 
Again, these routers and what their roles are and how they're elected will be explained later. So just remember that this is in the hello packet. Finally, we have an active neighbor section, which is a list of the OSPF neighbors seen on the, ne uh, on the network segment. This is really the high level overview of the OSPF hello packet. If you're really good at memorizing, you can memorize this. Uh, you can always refer to the table when you need it. And as you lab it out, uh, what's in the hello packet and why it matters will just kind of become internalized for you. All of this is going to make much more practical sense as the course progresses and we do some configuration, analysis, and troubleshooting. I've found that OSPF and really networking in general is kind of like math or algebra or something. You have to learn some basics first and then everything builds on top of that. Uh, I'm not very good at algebra or math, by the way, but at least I'm better at networking. <laughs> anyway, if this seems like a lot right now, don't worry. It'll start to make more sense as the course progresses and it will make a lot more sense as you continue to look at these things in your own lab. Before we wrap up this video section, let's take a look uh, at a real hello packet from an OSPF setup. So I'll see you in the lab. I have my purple background. I had a nice purple background. Okay. So what we have here is just a very simple OSPF topology. Everything is in area zero. The IP addresses are 10.1.10.x, where x is the router number. So this is dot one, this is dot two, this is dot three. Remember we mentioned router IDs before. The router ID for these routers has been configured to be 3.3.3.2.2.2.2.2.1.1.1.1. So what we're going to do here is I am currently on router one. And I just have this interface shut down. Um, everything's been configured already, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring up this interface. We're, we're going to turn on debugging so you can see kind of a uh, sneak peek into the neighbor states, how you transition through those. And then I'll pull up a packet capture and we'll look at the actual OSPF, uh, hello, hello packets. So first debug IP OSPF. Uh, ADJ or adjacency. This is going to show us some output as soon as I open up this interface. So let's just, let's just go ahead and do that. How many seconds here? We should see some messages and we do. Okay. So, uh, as I mentioned earlier in the, in the video, you, you move through a series of states. First, you send hellos, you discover your neighbors, and then you move through a series of states before you become uh, fully adjacent. As you can see, we're, we're sending uh, and receiving LSUs. Uh, we sent an LS request to our neighbor 2.2.2.2. .2 .2 .2. Um, we also sent our database description. Uh, we received the update that we requested um, and became fully adjacent with 2.2.2.2. .2 then you can see this is loading from full. We have the designator designated and backup uh, designated router elections and things like this. All of these specific things I'm going to cover in more detail in the next video. I just wanted to show you this as a sneak peek that this is what happens when you turn up an interface that has OSPF enabled. Now, what I'm going to do is start a capture on our E02 because this is our OSPF interface. Okay, so now that we're in Wireshark, we can see here some OSPF stuff going through. I'm gonna filter for just OSPF. Okay, as soon as one of these comes in, I'm gonna count. I just wanna show you one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, I'm a, I'm a slow count, but you can see that these are coming every 10 seconds as as explained. I'm going to go ahead and stop the capture now because we just need to open up one of these. Um, this is going to be coming from us. And as you can see, the destination for these hello packets is that 224.0.0.5. So this is the all OSPF router. Looking, looking deeper into the packet here, we can see we have IPv4. And if we look at the protocol, you can see I was not lying. It is number 89. So EIGRP is 88, OSPF is 89. These are some, this is just something that you'll want to memorize if you're gonna take some Cisco exams, or it may just be useful for your career to have this memorized in your head. Anyway, getting into the contents of the packets itself. In this capture, you can see that all of the, all of the information that we mentioned is, is here. In the header, we have the source router. 
So this is going to be the router ID. This is not the IP address. So this packet we opened up is from a source of 10.1.10.1. So that's router one. The router ID for router one is 1.1.1.1. So the source OSPF router is the router ID of the router who sent the hello. And then we have here the area ID. As mentioned, this is in um, dotted decimal no notation. So this is area zero. And we know that this is the backbone area. Again, our destination was 224.0.0.5. Authentication type here is null because we don't have any authentication configured. Into the hello packet, here you can see that we have the, the network mask. So it is a slash 24 that was sending this. So I have configured this as a slash 24 and that's reflected here. Again, we have our hello interval, which is 10 seconds for this network type. Then we have our priority, which has to do with the designated router election, uh, which will be explained later, but that's what this priority is. Again, we have the dead interval. We have our designated router, which ended up to be router three and our backup designated router, which ended up to be router two. And then we have our neighbors, which are 2.2.2.2 and 3.3.3.3. This is all reflected here. And it's interesting that you can find out this just from looking at the contents of the hello packet. So that was a brief overlook at the actual adjacency states. You know, um, the neighbor states, as soon as you turn up the OSPF interface, then we saw that the hello packets were sent every 10 seconds. And looking at the contents of this packet, we can see that everything that was in the table is here in the capture. So. Turn this up in your own lab, look at it in Packet Tracer if that's all you have. Um, if you're going for CCNP and beyond, I'm sure you have some other kind of lab set up by now. So turn it up in the lab, do your own capture, set your own stuff up, look at it, leave me a comment, let me know how it went. And until the next lab, I'll see you in the next lab. Now let's, let's close out this video. So in conclusion, you should now have a high level overview of how OSPF routers form adjacencies or become neighbors. You should also understand how they share information about the network and the routes they know. So OSPF uses multicast when possible with 224.0.0.5 being the all OSPF routers address and 224.0.0.6 being the all designated routers address. Designated routers and their role will be explained in the upcoming video section, so don't worry. You also know now that OSPF uses five packet types to move through different neighbor states before becoming fully adjacent. Becoming fully adjacent just means that the routers have synchronized OSPF databases. You now know that the OSPF hello packet is used to discover and maintain neighborships. You know the contents of a hello, and we've looked at a packet capture of an OSPF hello. The other packet types are used to request and exchange information about the links. And that about sums up the contents of this video. So I hope you took some good notes. I hope you're ready to try some of this out in your own lab. Leave a comment and let me know how your labbing is going. Let me know how this series is going. Let me know a day that you would like to see the videos come out um, or just just let me know what you're studying for or whatever. Coming up next, I hope to cover the OSPF state machine, so OSPF neighbor states. I will go over OSPF adjacency requirements, so what has to match and what do the routers need to agree on to successfully become OSPF neighbors. And we'll do some basic OSPF configuration show you the routers moving through the different neighbor states again, and possibly get into some misconfigurations or troubleshooting of very basic OSPF. Again, this all depends on how long or short the video is. If you're following this series and you have any input, I'd love to hear it down below in the comments. If you want longer form, shorter form, if how it's going is good, uh, let me know in the comments below or send me an email from my website. Links to everything will be in the description as well as future and past videos in this course. After we cover neighbor states and basic config, we'll dive deeper into what the designated routers are, why we need them, how they're elective. And in conclusion, I hope this has been informative so far and thank you for watching. I hope to see you in the next lesson. Make sure you like and subscribe if you're enjoying this so far. And until next time, I'll see you then. Bye guys.